Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos on bacteria and viruses. In this video, viruses and viral diseases will be described. The quote on this slide states, the single biggest threat to man's continued dominance on the planet is the virus. The picture on this slide shows the Ebola virus, causing a highly contagious and very deadly hemorrhagic fever. This virus, many other examples, as well as how they replicate inside cells, will be described within this video. There are two primary viral cycles, or patterns in which infection can occur. The lytic cycle is called the virulent cycle because it causes disease. In this cycle, exhibited on this slide, viruses inject their DNA or RNA into a host cell. The viral DNA or RNA is copied and viral proteins are made. New viruses are assembled within the host cell and viral enzymes are produced causing lysis or the rupturing of the cell. That's why this cycle is named the lytic cycle. The death of these cells usually causes symptoms of the infection. New viruses burst out of the killed cell and move on to infect other new host cells. Sometimes instead of or after an all-out attack in your body, viruses choose to sit and wait patiently. The lysogenic cycle is sometimes called the temperate cycle as viruses aren't immediately causing disease. In this viral cycle, again exhibited on this slide, the virus injects its DNA or RNA into the host cell's genome. There it just lies and waits for an opportunity to strike. As the cell reproduces through mitosis or binary fission, each new daughter cell contains a copy of the viral DNA. At any point, as shown in this picture, the virus can leave the lysogenic cycle and jump into the lytic cycle. Oral herpes or cold sores provide an excellent example of these two cycles within your body. About 90% of the human population is infected with oral herpes and will be for the rest of their lives. Most of the time, people have no symptoms of this virus being in their body. It just hides out in nerve cells and it's in the lysogenic cycle. Every once in a while, however, the virus enters the lytic cycle spreads to other cells and causes disease, leaving you with a cold sore. Shingles, which is a recurrence of chickenpox, would be another example of a virus within your body jumping within the lytic and lysogenic cycles. As discussed in the earlier video on bacterial disease, vaccines can be used to prevent many viral and bacterial infections. Antibiotics, on the other hand, are of absolutely no use for the treatment of viruses. They're only used to kill off bacteria. Sometimes, however, antibiotics may be prescribed if you have a viral infection to prevent a secondary bacterial infection. Once you have a virus, there's little that you can do other than treat the symptoms. Taking aspirin or Tylenol to lower your fever or to relieve pain may help you feel a little bit better, but it doesn't really help you get rid of the virus. Your body has to take care of that on its own. Many viruses affect you for more than a day or two. If you've ever had the stomach flu, it was probably caused by a bacterium and not a virus like influenza. There are a tremendous number of viruses that can be passed in many different ways and have a wide variety of symptoms, just as the bacteria that were described in previous videos. The chart on this slide provides a number of different examples. That is the end of this video describing viruses and disease. If you're interested in learning more about bacteria and viruses, or any other topics in biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.